EBK4, you also remade X-Rated with every single. What what made you want to remake an X-Rated song? That was my favorite X-Rated song at the time. And, and he was locked up. I was trying to show him support while he was locked up, too. Okay. And I wanted to talk to him in, in, in order to ask him to do it. And so he would know I, I was doing it, too. So okay. that was us at that time. So then with the virus, is that also the same situation where they just took stuff that wasn't done or? Yeah, he came up with the title. Black Market came up with the title and everything. I never had an album I was going to call Virus. Hmm. So looking back at the time and now looking at it today, what effect do you think those two albums had on your career? Well, I've get both sides of the fence some people say i was falling off some people just said it was a good album okay but, um, i was on a campaign to tell everybody that that was a fake album at the time so i didn't care what they thought about it hmm. i wasn't probably still wasn't even getting the money for it at that time either right because i don't even know what priority what happened between priority and cedric singleton after that Right. Well, it's good you have a fan with Dave because the Black Movement album came a few years later with Sibo, yep. the collaboration that he did with J-Cor. Mm -hmm. um, so Sibo's obviously Sacramento as well, mm -hmm. uh, among other collaborations you guys have too, or similarities, I should say. So that being said, uh, when the Black Movement came out, you're on a, you know, this is J-Cor, it's a collaborative album. What mm -hmm. uh, what effect did that have you at, uh, have on you at the time? Well, I felt like I was doing the work. Sebo was locked up, and I was uh, rapping the songs that he had already had vocals to. So I don't know. I just thought it was something in between what was going to happen for me next, mm -hmm. and it was good money. Like David and paid me good, so. But it was kind of awkward. I mean, people probably look at that album a lot different. Like we, me and Sebo were in the um, studio recording together, but we weren't. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. And, and then, then you have, you started doing, before we get to Lynch by Inch, you started having a lot of collaboration albums. Well, well you had been doing that. But what, what made the collaboration albums uh, appeal to you during this time? Well, I hadn't had an idea for a solo album yet. I won't drop an album unless I come up with an idea. You know, 45 years have passed. But um, I had, you know, a crew at the time who I wanted to get known. So um, I did a lot of collabs and, and, and would get their names out there. So that's, that's how my mind was thinking at that time. Okay. I wasn't even thinking about making a solo album. I didn't even know if I would even make another one. Hmm. Gotcha. And then when you get to Lynch by Inch, there's it's a long, long project. So what what was the reason for that? Well, um, I had left Sick Maid alone and started Made Sick. I wanted and I had artists. And so um, me being my label, I wanted to be the first one to represent Made Sick. So I, I went to Beta, said, help me with some beats. And I kind of did some production on that one too. And, and we had signed a deal with uh, Selecto Distribution and they were willing to get me all over the United States at least. So I, it, with my own label. So I was excited to see how that would work out. Selecto Hits did a lot of great things over the years, man. They're one of the- Yeah, yeah they took care of me. They took care of me to a point, so. Well, that's good. I mean, they do a lot of, they did rap too, but they're more focused on other types of music too. So they did what they could do for me and I really appreciate them. Yeah, because being in Memphis, you know, I first knew of them from doing like DJ Cool, the music ain't loud enough back in the day. Yeah. Uh, but, but then they did uh, obviously a lot of stuff with the 3-6 Mafia mm -hmm. uh, before 
the lynch by inch era of course they did a lot of their early stuff and kept doing it when they even were on uh, relativity and loud so i wanted to do so i wanted to do a song with them before they even got the grammy yeah no they're incredible you know so but um i don't know jeff he wasn't they weren't into like cooking me up with a lot of people that were they were working with hmm. and stuff so I kind of just was my own thing over here. Okay. I never asked him either. So I got to put that out there. Yeah. I, but I wanted to. So why didn't you ask him? Well, I was planning to, but then when they got that Grammy, I felt that they were unreachable. Hmm. Even with Selecto. Really? Yeah. It's probably something I should have tried. Another mistake probably I made. Well, you still got time. That's true. That is true. Now, with uh, as time goes on in the mid to 2000s, you get on the, the Ever Ready, The Religion, My World with Tech 9 and Dilemma. Mm -hmm. um, and that one, how did getting on that song end up uh, affecting your career, would you say? Well, it really amped me. Because um, at the time I was in between albums. I had just met the girl who I'm married to now. And I was kind of just falling in love at that time. But then Tech hit me and um, wanted me to get on that album. And, and it kind of amped me back up. And once that happened, I guess that made uh, Strange interested in signing me. And maybe about a year or two after that, I ended up signing with Strange. Right. So when, when you had the three album deal with strange. Uh, I remember Dave and other people at strange telling me that you had this idea for the three album, just kicking trilogy. it off, kicking it off with dinner in the movie, this three album saga, the trilogy. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you remember why or how did that concept come to you and made you say, because if you always wait till you have an idea for an album, how did this point in your life, did you end up getting three ideas for three albums right away? You know, how did that happen? Well, it's because it was a three album deal. And I was like, has any other rapper did a three album trilogy? And at the time I was like, well, no. And I still don't know if they have. But um, at that time, since it was a three album deal, I wanted to put them all together. And and, and at that time, also, at, after Dave had did the Now Eat movie for me, I was deeply in the movies. I, I started shifting like over to trying to be a, a young director or something now. You know, I mean, even that's how I feel these days. I'm, I'm really trying to be a director right now. But, um, but uh, back then, that's when I first started figuring out that I love this movie stuff and I might want to get into it. So I might as well start with a three album trilogy, try to make it sound like a movie and, and do the videos, you know, in order or accordingly. And Travis was down to do it. He had the money to do it. So I was like, you know, this is nice. Let's do it. Yeah. And at this point in uh, the 2010-ish era, Strange, you know, is doing extremely well. You know, you yep. had, you had uh, video, you had visuals that were supporting you. You had three albums. You had seven did the majority, even though others did as well. You had a lot of stuff, text on the albums, different things. So how would you evaluate the difference of doing uh, Dinner in a Movie, Coat Hanger, Strangler, Mandible Lecter with them versus everything prior to that in your career? Well, for one, I didn't have the time to be creative because Travis moves. He likes it done. Um, and that kind of hindered me a little bit. So I feel the trilogy was a little rushed and probably could have been a little better. But um I just wanted to respect the man's wishes and get everything in turned in on time. So, um, but I, I, I really could have made that better if I'd have had the time. It probably would have took a little longer though. Hmm. Given that those I thought were extremely well laid out, what would you have liked more time to work on? Picking the beats. Cause I picked a lot of beats that made me, took me away from Brother Lynchung and, and I found it more strange. I sound more like a strange artist 
than Brother Lynchung. And and to me, I didn't think that's what they wanted from me. So I would have definitely picked if I didn't have a time limit, I would have picked beats that suited me more. Hmm. Okay. A futuristic me, not the 24 deep me, but a, a futuristic me, a mar a modern day at that time me. Okay. And with them, you also did some touring. So what was the the realization of what was happening on the road, being on the road, being on a real well-oiled machine that they had at the time with the, all their tours and stuff? How did that affect you, open your eyes, change your perspective on things? Like, Well, they, they pretty much saved my life. I went and got these new, brand new young fans. You know, the whole time I was signed with him, I was gathering young fans that probably wouldn't even be around today if I didn't sign with Strange. So I was happy about that. You know, like I always say, Travis saved my life at that time. He really did. You know, I don't know what level we're on now, but he saved my life at that time. Okay. Well, that's a big thing. Yeah. So that's huge. Um, Gave me new fan base too, you know. So in this fan base today, I could, it'd be a fan base of white people and black people, older black people in the same crowd now, the shows that I do. Where back in the day, it was all blacks gang banging and stuff. Now Hooked Over Strange picked up a whole new side of fans. And now both come to the show and they all get along. Yeah. So it's weird. Well, They're older and younger. Well, I remember back in 2006 when I went to Kansas City for the Ever Ready the Religion release, and you did My World. The only time you, I think you guys had done it together at that point was at that release party and yeah. for several years. So I was very glad since I had a hand in making that song. I was so glad to be able to see it. That was uh, very exciting. I still come out to that song first. It's a great one. My show set. So that's I didn't know you were a producer though, boy. Woo. Well, no, no, no. I I'll add you in the future. I worked with a trackster at the time. I was working with trackster selling beats for him. So that's I didn't make the beat. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> it's oh. a legendary trackster did that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I work with him. Still do. So that was before seven or what? Uh well, I don't work with seven. Oh okay. not, not like that. No. Oh, okay. I'm friends with them and know them, but no, I don't work with them like that. Uh -huh. um, but anyway, um, so of course you got a lot of st other stuff going on, but now you're working on a new project. So what uh, are you able to speak on on that at this point? Well, it's um, Season of the Sickness 2. The cover already got leaked. Uh, I need to stop doing that. But um, the cover's leaked online. I'm doing this mostly because they say I can't beat one. Like, I'm as whack as I was a rapper, but I mean, I ain't saying I was whack, man, but I mean, I obviously rhyme better than that now, you know, and I'm going to different things in my life, too, that I want to talk about that's kind of on that tip. Okay. So, but I'm doing it mostly because of fans that I can't. And why is that so motivating to you? I love when people say I can't do something. I love to prove them wrong. All right. Doesn't matter. Well, as the great above the law said, time will reveal. Yes, sir. All right. Well, Brother Lynch, thanks so much for coming through to Unique Access. Anything else you want to add before we go? <laughs> Just look for the album. I'm trying to get it out this year. If not, um, next year I'll be touring, and that album will be out for sure. And thank you for having me.
Be sure to check out the History of Gangster Rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangster Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice-T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangster Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip-hop music. A 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.